Hey there, Leo, and thank you so much for joining me on this um, new moon. It's the 13th, uh, 13th of March. This is a reading for you between this day, the 13th of March, the new moon, through the full moon on the 28th. So thank you for being guided to this uh, reading, Leo. And if you are a frequent flyer of my channel, you know that recently I put out some epically long reads new um for full moon for divine masculine for divine feminine and those readings for divine masculine and divine feminine were for the entire month of march if you have not checked those out yet please do i also get into information about the stargate and what that is and i and there's also a meditation um a, an integrated meditation for you to check out for the stargate too even though officially the stargate has ended today it doesn't matter when you do it it's really important to do it whenever you're guided to now for this reading what we're going to get into are three oracles the moonology sacred geometry and archetype Oracle. Now, these last two are very new to me, and I'm fully in love with them, love using them. And then thirdly, um, or fourthly, I should say, is the Angel Tarot, but we're just using the Major Arcana, which is the Archangels in the Angel Tarot. So that will be our last card. Our first card is going to be Moonology. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Infinity. I'm a medical medium, psychic, physical empath, uh, ascension coach, um, mystic shaman and uh i offer a lot of different services a lot of different types of ways to work with me and uh as far as private readings um energy work for you your children your animals i work worldwide i also have meditations and ebooks on my website so the healing butterfly.org i really um encourage you to check it out if you're so guided now for our first card it is a win-win outcome is forecast this is full moon in libra uh for you leos and um that's a great card i love this card really good energy here a win-win outcome is forecast so whatever is um you're working on maybe it's a partnership maybe um some type of collaboration it could just be that you're maybe connecting more with um with your uh i have a drunk dog over here with your guides and your connections are really like forming synchronicities like you're really being you're just like wow wow so it's like that's the win-win you're just like whoa whoa like you're connecting things um and just having more confidence with that sort of thing but let's get into it here with the sacred whoa with the sacred geometry um pull a card here i love this new deck it has a lot going on in it um Let's see what we get here for you, Leo. There's a card. And it is the Fruit of Life, card number 14, the Fruit of Life. How awesome that card is. So let's get right into it, Leo, with the Fruit of Life card. Card 14. Right after the flower of life is the fruit of life. And I'm going to take some light here so I don't have to struggle so much. 13 spheres of knowledge. I am ready to expand my knowledge of life um, and that which has been hidden from behind the veil. This card has appeared today as you are searching for answers to questions you need to find. You are longing for knowledge that has started to awaken deep within your mental and spiritual core. You are ready to take the leap of faith that is now wanting to show you that there is more to this world than meets the eye. It is time to start searching for that special course or teacher to help you expand your knowledge. You will also find yourself starting to seek out more like-minded people who are on the same wavelength energetically. 
and sacred geometry. When we remove the two outer um, concentric circles from the flower of life, another six circles complete the partial arcs. Th when this occurs, we are left with a pattern called the fruit of life, named so as it is said to contain the blueprint of all creation. From atomic to molecular structure, it is all life forms in existence. <laughs> like, okay. Um, it sets up the platform of Metatron's cube, which contains all five platonic solids, which are the building blocks of the entire universe. Okay, this is <laughs> so, so new and so stiff. Okay, when we look at this picture, we see spheres, which are a representation of the feminine. In two dimensions, it holds within 13 circles. These 13 circles contain informational systems, each containing another aspect of reality. 13 is said to be the key for unity and transition between worlds and, dim and dimensions. It pertains to the 13 chakra system or energetic bodies. In music, the chromatic scale consists of 12 tones, with the 13th being a repeat of the first note. It is the 12 around the one. If we were to look at this shape three-dimensionally, we obtain a cube of four by four by four spheres, equaling 64 in total. The fruit of life is seen as the feminine of Metatron's cube, as, as at this point there are only circles and no lines. Now, when I look at it, I start to see lines, but, you know, uh, tr you know it is just lines and, until things start to pop for you if they do. Okay, um, practical application. We each carry the ancient knowledge and wisdom within us. It sits deep within our DNA. As we begin to awaken, our thirst for knowledge becomes more inherent. This geometry can help us... Uh, find the answers we are looking for. We can do this by meditating on this card and, and accessing the system of knowledge it pertains to. Whether we want to delve into higher worlds and dimensions or work on the informational systems on a self-healing level, the fruit of life is here to help us remember that which has been forgotten. And the card numerology is number one. And the crystal suggestions are Herkimer Diamond, Lumerian, Seed Crystal, Selenite, and Atlantisite. <coughs> okay, so I keep hearing Divine Feminine, Divine Feminine, Divine Feminine. So I'm being guided to guide you once again to those Divine Feminine readings that I did um, uh, like a week or whatever ago. And so first off, there's that. Um, needing to balance, balance. <laughs> Balance divine feminine energies with divine masculine energies. Healing divine feminine type wounds or the womb wound um, is also echoing to me here. Uh, you're ready to take a leap of faith that, that is now wanting to show you that there is more to the world than meets the eye. So this is about allowing for sacred wisdom and knowledge to come in, allowing yourself to connect with your soul and your guides and guardians. This is definitely a thing um, with these readings at this time, which has not surprised me at all, given what I've, <coughs> excuse me, already got for this month with Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine reads, and those reads were for the entire month. So they were epic reads for the entire month. Um, the Divine Masculine had a lot more um, information because we're really being guided to tap in with our Divine um, with our divine masculine to help balance out our divine feminine. So those, the videos for those, the reads for those are extremely different. Um, but I, I do, I do encourage you to check them out. Um, and I'm just hearing, um, ready, ready for a new stage, ready, 
Leo to kind of move into a, a maybe a more quiet stage of listening, of of bringing in um, instead of putting out the female energy of being the the chalice, the cup, the receptacle, the womb, and being impregnated with information to balance out. That's what I'm feeling here. Let's see what we get here with our uh, archetype cards. And got one here. Let's see what that brings us. More clarity here for archetypal information. And we got the shapeshifter card number 15. The shapeshifter card number 15. Let's go ahead and dive right into that. And there we go, the shapeshifter. Uh the trickster, the elusive, the formless. The shapeshifter has a love of theater, games, and trickery. Its energy appears as one thing, only to reveal a more complex story below the surface. The shapeshifter is within all of us to some degree. It is a side of ourselves that is slippery, non-committal, and experimental, and longs to dismiss the rules. We need its energy to adapt to the ever-changing landscape of our existence. When the shapeshifter card appears, it's important to imagine you are looking at life through a kaleidoscope rather than a single focused lens. At any moment, the scene may shift, revealing a more enchanting vision than you imagined. Be wary though, as the allure of the kaleidoscope can leave you exhausted and yearning for solid ground. Dancing. Long term with the shapeshifter requires a central pillar of integrity that links us back to our center. And when light, vibrant, adaptive, humorous. When dark, charlatan, people pleasing, trickery. Go deeper with Cindy Sherman, whoever that is. Um, the ultimate shapeshifter works undercover in service of the greater good. The diminished shapeshifter becomes a people pleaser. And the shapeshifter is related to the mask. Notice if these cards come up together in one reading. If so, you are in the realm of heavy theater illusion, possible deception. Okay. So what I'm feeling here with this shapeshifter card is this sense of acceptance of what's coming in and really having this readiness um leo fire sign um win-win is forecast so i think that you've experienced some um shift in energies as far as um your your experience with what you what you've been doing and you have seen a win-win kind of situation like what you put out what you're getting back what you're healing what you're experiencing that sort of thing um But it's also kind of coming through here because it says this is kind of like, you know, you're shifting, you're kind of moving from this to that or whatever. So there's just this kind of sense of figuring stuff out. And with the fruit of life, there's a, certainly a lot to figure out here. Even though we're, you know, definitely there's more of this, this feminine energy, but it feels very creational to me. The shapeshifter energy feels kind of like I'm ready to work with whatever recipe or tools that are coming into, into my world and see what comes of it, which is really, really cool, really cool energy. So it's not, so I'm not, because with some readings, it's kind of like we need to release, we need to clear. What are you afraid of? You know, you need to move on to so let, you know, stuff come in. And with this, I'm not getting that at all here. I'm getting more like things have come more into balance. You have done some clearing. You are connecting with the divine feminine and under understanding that on a on a deeper level kind of letting go of more like egoic narcissistic type of 
um, self-centered, uh, that like kaleidoscope thing where it says here, um, how you look through the kaleidoscope and what you're seeing. So it's like putting yourself on this side and looking out um, through the kaleidoscope um, and taking yourself out of it, I'm seeing or hearing or feeling that like taking yourself out of the scene will give you better perspective. That's very interesting, especially as shapeshifter. Shapeshifter energy, taking yourself out. So it's almost like turning into like an inanimate object and just kind of seeing the play kind of do its thing without a whole lot of energy from you um, other than just going with the flow. Interesting. And we have the wheel with Michael, a time of positive change, a situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side with the wheel. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying here. It's kind of like, you know, I'm just seeing stuff kind of coming and it is turning over. Like I've seen what I've seen, where I've been and what I've done and what I'm cool. Like, like cause and effect, cause and effect, law of attraction, that kind of thing, and things moving forward. So the wheel, card number 10 with um, Archangel Michael, very strong energies here, um, uh, speaking to change, speaking to new coming in, speaking to balance of of the energies, masculine and feminine, and and maybe even um, a person, a, a group, um, connections coming in for you that is going to even help balance you out even more. It's going to be like, oh, wow, this is definitely, it could be online, it could be a workshop, it could be um, a course, it could be even in person, stuff in person is definitely starting to happen. And I feel that you're going to be um, um, coming into a, a time here where like this fruit of life energy is really like this creational energy, this turning into something else energy, shapeshifter energy, and maybe meeting other shapeshifters that can show you, um, you know, that it's not so weird to tap into that shapeshifter type energy. I certainly do it. And, and as a shaman, as a mystic, being a shapeshifter is certainly part of that and needing to move kind of like a, like a snake. <laughs> I feel a lot of snake energy with the shapeshifter. Um, and the shapeshifter is definitely always shedding skin and turning into a rebirthing itself. So there you go. This is a really cool read because it shows readiness to move forward with the wheel, with the fruit of life, with this win-win outcome is forecast, with the shapeshifter. Um, yeah, so I would just say be open to the change coming, be open to, to balancing out, again, tapping in with Divine Feminine Energies, and please check out that video on the Stargate, Meditation for the Stargate, and the Divine Feminine Masculine um, videos. I know it's a lot, but um, whatever you're guided to there will definitely, if you haven't watched those videos yet, will definitely help you, will, um, I'm, I'm seeing will give insight for you. Um, of course, this is a general read, so the more information you have to, to come in after that will be helpful. Okie dokie, Leo. Thank you so much for joining me here today, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.